friends so welcome to this session on quadratic equation and uh, we will be trying to revise the hello concept. friends so welcome to this we'll be trying to uh, revise the concepts of quadratic equations in uh, two hours time we have some slides prepared for you and uh, so to begin with i'll need who all are present so i can see there are few students who are already there so let's begin our uh, class so quadratic equation is an important chapter in in your 10th board portions so basically we start with polynomial right so what is a quadratic polynomial so a quadratic polynomial is nothing but a polynomial of degree 2 degree 2 uh, degree 2 and is called a quadratic polynomial so any polynomial with degree 2 is called a quadratic polynomial the general form of a quadratic polynomial is ax square so hence a uh, general form of a quadratic polynomial is a x square plus b x plus c, where a b c are real numbers, right? So a b and c all belong to the set of real numbers, and you, a cannot be zero. Why? Right? A if a becomes zero, then this polynomial is reduced to a linear polynomial. So hence, a cannot be zero. So this is a this is a example, or let's say this is a definition of a quadratic polynomial. Yeah. Okay. So what's next? so let us go to the next uh, slide we'll try to cover the you know topics quickly and then we will be going to uh, problem solving so now the second thing is if px equals ax square plus bx plus c and a not equal to 0 is a quadratic polynomial and alpha is a real number then p of alpha is equal to a alpha square plus b alpha plus c is known as the value of the quadratic polynomial right so hence example will be let's say px is equal to uh, 2x square plus x plus 1 let's say then p of 1 is called the value of the polynomial at x equals to 1 so at p equals to 1 will be nothing but 2 times 1 square plus 1 plus 1 which is nothing but 4 right so hence this is meant by uh, what is uh, meant by the value of a polynomial at any given x okay next in case during this uh, you know we will be a little uh, fast in revising so in case you have any doubt you can always post either as a whatsapp query or in the chat uh, sessions also yeah next is next is a real number alpha is said to be a zero right a near a real number again we are dealing with real numbers a real number alpha is said to be a zero of the quadratic polynomial right so let's say if i have a quadratic polynomial px equals ax square plus bx plus c please remember always this is the general form of the quadratic polynomial and if uh, alpha is the zero uh, if alpha is the zero then that is if alpha is a zero a zero of this of px then alpha is that value which will make px zero so hence that means if i if i uh, plug in x uh, plug in alpha in place of x you will get p of alpha is zero that means a times alpha square plus b alpha plus c equals zero right so let's take an example if px is let's say a square minus 2x or rather uh we will be taking it as um x square so x square minus 2x plus 1 okay so if you see p of 1 that means if i plug in 1 in place of x i will get 1 square minus 2 times 1 plus 1 which is 0 so hence we can say 0 or we can say 1 is the 0 0 of px okay this is uh what, what this is meant uh, this is meant by what is meant by zero of a polynomial okay next move to the next slide next slide is yeah so next one is card number 4 it says if px is equal to ax square plus bx plus c is a quadratic polynomial then px equals to 0 that is so this is a definition of a quadratic equation so equate any quadratic polynomial to 0 you will get a quadratic quadratic 
quadratic equation. There is nothing much to delve into it. So quadratic equation definition is there is a polynomial which is ax square plus bx plus c. So ax square plus bx plus c. Let's say if you equate it to zero, or for that matter, any other number if you also equate it to, and then uh, express in this form ax square plus bx plus c equals to zero, then it is a quadratic equation. Mind you, a cannot be zero. A cannot be zero. Why? If, if a, a becomes zero, then it is reduced to bx plus c equals zero, which is nothing but a linear equation in one variable, a linear equation. Okay, so please be mindful of this. Let's go to the next slide. Next slide, what is there in the next slide? Next slide says a real number alpha, a real number alpha, right? A real number alpha is said to be a root, mind the word. So if real number alpha is said to be a root of the quadratic equation, ax square plus bx plus c equals to zero. If a alpha square plus b alpha plus c equals zero, this is, you know, time and again you have done it. So no point investing more time into it. So hence if alpha is the root, then if you deploy that uh, alpha in the equation, you will get both sides, LHS as well as RHS to be equal to zero, right? A real number alpha is said to be a root of the quadratic equation if and only if alpha is zero of the polynomial. So these are, you know, uh, you know, uh, we are trying to uh, relate two things. So let's say we studied zero of a polynomial, zero of a polynomial. What is the zero of a polynomial? That particular value of the variable which makes the polynomial zero. So if zero of a polynomial will become Nothing but root of the equation, root of the equation. Which equation? If you equate, let's say the polynomial was px, then if you equate that px to zero, then that becomes root of root of this polynomial, right? Root of px. So same value, let's say alpha, if alpha is zero of polynomial px, then alpha will be the root of equation px equals to zero. Okay, so this is about root and zeros. Let's go to the next slide. Next slide is, yeah, so okay, so this is if ax square plus bx plus c a not equals to zero is factorizable into a product of two linear factors, then the roots of the quadratic equation can be found out by equating each factor to zero. So this is nothing but now we are we are heading towards how to solve or sorry wait a minute okay yeah so it's nothing but how to solve how to solve a quadratic a quadratic equation how to solve a quadratic equation so method number one is factorization method factorization factorization method so in in your exams there will be categorical questions where they will be saying using factorization method solve this quadratic equation and we'll see problems related to that a little later but uh, or we can also parallelly solve uh, you know questions like that but then the question will be factorize uh, using factorization method solve it another is something called completing the square method completing the square method square method this is the second method through which you can solve uh, any quadratic equation and third is third is by quadratic formula quadratic formula right which actually quadratic quadratic formula now quadratic formula is a direct fallout of completing the square method only so it is they are linked so quadratic formula comes from this but then now we have a uh, direct formula to uh, solve any quadratic equation correct now we'll take up factorization method one hour uh, and completing the square method and quadratic formula one by one so what is factorization method let me take you know to this slide now quadratic uh, let's say factorization method so what do you do in factorization method factorization method Okay, so let's say you have, and we'll, we'll use examples. Let's say one question is given, and the question is, question is using a quadratic, uh, let's say factorization method, solve this very simple question, x squared plus 6x plus 5 
equals zero. We'll take uh, you know difficult ones as well. So x squared plus six x plus five equals to zero. In factorization method, which you have already learned, we we try and split the middle term, right? So split the middle term such that let's say if you have a general equation a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero, what do you need to do? You first multiply a and c, find the value. Okay, and then try to break b into b1 plus b2 as sum of b1 plus b2 such that b1 b2, the product of b1 and b2 should be equal to a and c, a c, right? This is how this is how we do the uh, factorization method solution. Okay, now so x square plus 6x. Now, what is a here? Value of a, let me write, is 1. Value of b is 6 and c is 5. So a c is equal to 5. Correct? Now b is equal to 6. Now I have to break 6 into two terms, into two parts, such that b1 plus b2 is 6. And b1, b2 must be equal to a c, which is 5. Now a and c are integers. Okay, and 5 is a prime number. So the only way you can Factorize 5 is you can write 5 into 1, right? So hence b1 becomes 5 and b2 becomes 1. If you see, it clearly satisfies this relationship. So hence from here we can say it can be written as x square plus 5x plus x plus 5 equals 0. So hence x times x plus 5 take x common plus 1 times x plus 5 equals 0. So hence it is x plus 5 times x plus 1 equals 0. Now there are two, two, two product, uh, there are two factors whose multiplication whose product is 0. So it is possible only when x plus 5 equals to 0 or x plus 1 equals to 0. That means if this is true, then x equals negative 5. And if this is true, then x equals negative 1. Okay, so this is the solution. So hence x equals to negative 5 and x equals to negative 1 are the solution. Okay, you also remember guys for quadratic equations, the maximum number of solution you can have or maximum number of uh, roots you can have is 2. Either the quadratic equation will have no solution or it will have only one solution which we say as equal solutions or it will have two real solutions. So hence, what do, what do I say? The quadratic equation will have no real solution. We'll see later on what are the conditions. No real solution. No real solution. Or it can have two equal solutions. Two equal solutions. And three is, third is, two unique or two unequal equal solutions. Now we are talking in terms of only real numbers. We are not going into the realm of complex numbers. So all are. So if these are valid, then these are valid for as in the solutions are in real domain. Okay, so we will see uh, some more problems on this. Okay, let's see what else. Let's take up some more questions on factorization method. Then we will proceed. Okay, so the question is factorize, uh, solve the following quadratic equation by factorization method. And the question is this. Question is x square plus 2 root x. 2 root 2 x minus 6 equals 0. Again, what is A? A is 1. What is B? B is positive 2 root 2 and C is negative 6. Okay, now I have to, what is AC? AC is 6. Okay, and B I have to split in such a way that B1 plus B2 is equal to 2 root 2 and, and B1, B2 is equal to 6 isn't it b1 oh, sorry not 6 negative 6 okay now if you see uh, there is a irrational irrational term here 2 root 2 is an irrational number and but b1 b2 is you know which is equal to ac sorry ac is negative 6 here so negative 6 right or ac is or this is equal to ac sorry this is equal to ac right yeah. now we have to split in in such a way so we we have to split two root two in such a way that the product is rational. Now, how can that be possible? That a uh, sum of two numbers is irrational, but product is rational. That can be possible only when you eliminate the irrational part from here, and that is possible only when I multiply two root two by at least root two. But now the sum must be yeah, the sum must be two root two, but the product must be 
negative six. Now another thing to be taken care of is if the sign of b1 plus b2 is not same as b1 b2, then what we do is we we take, we express b1 and b2 as subtraction of a larger number minus a smaller number. So hence two root two, if you see, can be expressed as three root two minus root two. And why did I do this? So if you multiply these two numbers, you will certainly get six negative six rather. And uh, the sum also is two root two. So hence the splitting of the middle term in this case will be three root two x, three root two x minus root two x minus six equals zero. So x is common to it. So x plus three root two. And then here again, if you see, this is minus root two common here. So this is x plus three root two. X plus three root two. This is equal to zero. Now if you if you see, this is nothing but x plus three root two into x minus three x minus root two equals zero. So hence, if you equate this, this is x plus three root two equals to zero, and x minus root two equals to zero. So hence, from the first one, you get x equals to negative three root two, and here you will get x equals to root two. Okay, this is how you have to solve. Let us take a a little bit more. Yeah, so let us take a CBSE 2013 CBSE 2013 question. What is CBSE 2013 question? What does it say? Okay. So let us say, let us say we are we are trying to solve CBSE CBSE 2013 question. Okay, send uh, CBSE 2013 question. The question says solve again by factorization method, and the equation given is one upon x minus two plus 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 one, uh, two upon x minus one. 2 upon x minus 1 is equal to 6 upon x. This is CBSE 2013 sum. Question asked in CBSE 2013 examination. So 1 upon x minus 2 plus 2 upon x minus 1 equals to 6 by x. Now, clearly this is not a quadratic equation in this form, but it can be reduced to 1. How? So let us take LCM and try and reduce it to a quadratic form. So hence it is nothing but x minus 2 and x minus 1 as a common denominator. So here is 1. So 1 times x minus 1. And here is 2. So 2 times x minus 2. And this must be equal to 6 upon x on the right hand side. Now the problem is reduced only for simplification. So if you simplify, this is x minus 1 plus twice of x minus 4 divided by, if you see, this is x square minus 2x minus x plus 2 and this is equal to 6 upon x okay now let us cross multiply cross multiplying i will get i will get x times x so this is nothing but if you simplify further this is x plus 2x which is 3x and minus 1 minus 4 is minus 5 okay and this has be, this has to be equal to 6 times here if you simplify you will get x squared minus 3x plus 2 correct so if you see simplify further this is 3x squared minus 5x and this equals 6x squared minus 18x plus 12. okay now it is uh, again you know we just need to reduce it further and then you will get a quadratic equation so if you simplify everything you'll get 6x squared minus 3x squared is 3x squared minus 18x and then minus 5x go on to the other side, it becomes uh, minus 13x. And here is plus 12, and this is equal to 0. Okay, so hence we get an equation. We, we get an equation 3x square minus 13x plus 12 equals to 0. Now again, what is a here? a is equal to 3, b equals to negative 13, and c equals 12. So AC is nothing but 36. Now I have to split B in such a way that B1 plus B2 is negative 13 and B1, B2 is equal to AC, which is equal to 36. Now how to do that? In such cases, we, we, we find out all the integral pair of factors of AC. So hence, I'll do this work here. So let's say 36 can be expressed as 1 into 36. Okay, clearly, 
uh, 1 and 36 will not yield you 30. So basically negative 1 into negative 36 will have to uh, do like that. And then uh, 36 can also be written as 2 into 18, right? But 18 and 2 also will not give you 30 here. So 36 can also be written as 3 into 12. Okay, but this again is not going to yield minus 13. So 36 now is nothing but 4 into 9. And this is something which is interesting. Why? Because 9 plus 4 is 13. So hence we now get the splits. So hence basically it can be written as 3x square minus 9x minus 4x plus 12 equals 0. If you now see negative 9 into negative 4 is 36 and negative 9 plus negative 4 is negative 13. So hence it is now you have to just the question remains to just find out the commons. So 3x is gone. So it is x minus 3 and then here 4 is common. So x minus 3 equals 0. So this is reduced to x minus 3 times 3x minus 4 equals 0. So hence either x minus 3 equals 0 or, or 3x minus 4 equals 0. So hence from this you will get x equals to 3 and from this you get x equals 4 upon 3. Okay, so this is a trick. For example, if you see here, B was negative and A and C were positive. In such a, in such case, be rest assured that uh, the 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 roots will be positive. So hence, we you know you you can you can you can take down as a trick. So let's say A was positive, A was greater than zero, B was less than zero, and C was again greater than zero. In such cases, both uh, you know uh, either both the roots will be positive or both the roots will be negative. You can you can you can take that as, as a trick now just to check whether you have solved the equation correctly now having seen this let's go back to our this thing so we now learned what was our factorization method so this is done we will see completing the square method in quadratic formula in a little while now uh, let's go back to next slide so the roots of a quadratic equation can also be found by using the method of completing the square. So let us let us do the completing the square method quickly, though the proofs are not asked in the exam, but you must know because uh, the process is important. Now, let's go to completing the square method. Okay. Okay. Now, so let me, yeah. So what is the completing the square method? Let's see. So completing the square method, let us say, so we are now dealing with Completing, completing the square, square method. So as the name suggests, we need to complete some square. What kind of a square? Here it is a binomial square we are going to complete. How? Let us say the equation was ax square plus bx plus c equals 0, where a clearly is not equal to 0. Now what we can do is divide the equation divide the equation by a. So what will you get? You will get x square plus b upon ax plus c upon a equals 0, isn't it? Now if you see guys, there is a square term and there is a term which contains x and another, another factor and there is a constant. Right, so what we can do is we can try and complete this square. It means what? Let's say this is half uh, rectangle I have shown. Why? Because we have to yet to complete this square. What does it mean? It means that if I somehow get a form x plus alpha square, what is the form? If you expand it, you'll get x square plus two alpha x plus alpha square, isn't it? So if you see these two terms resemble the first two terms of this expansion of a square so can we hence if we somehow add alpha square then we can complete the whole square that does that is what it means so let us see how we do it so hence i'm saying it is x square plus b upon a x plus c upon a equals zero now if you see i can say this is x square plus since i need a factor of two here so then what can what we can do is we can multiply and divide by Two, both. So basically, we multiply and divide this term by two. So hence, I can say this as two into x into so this x and this I have added an extra two here. 
which I will take out by doing this P upon 2A. Right? If you see now this whole term, this whole term is nothing but B by AX, but I have just manipulated it to write like that. Okay. Now this gives you a sense of X square plus 2AB kind of thing, right? So where this is B, so hence I can very well write B by 2A whole square, isn't it? But then if I have added something extra to the equation, I can get back to the original equation by subtracting the same quantity, isn't it? So this I can do now. This addition and subtraction nullifies the effect. And then finally, I can add C by A, which was already there. Now, why did I do that? If you see, you can clearly see a pattern here. This is a, this is a square, right? So hence, if you see, hence if you see, Hence, if you see, this is nothing but x plus b upon 2a whole squared, right? x squared plus 2x times b by 2a plus b by 2a whole square can be expressed as x plus b upon 2a whole square. And this is equal to, I can take all these extra terms to the right hand side and I can say this is b square by 4a square plus c upon a, isn't it? Now, I am writing it here. I am writing it here so that I don't lose the continuity. Now, if you see from here, I can say x plus b upon 2a whole square is equal to b square plus, if you take the LCM and you know sub simplify it, it will be 4ac by 4a square. Okay, so that means x plus b upon 2a will be nothing but plus minus under root b square plus 4. 4ac upon 4a square. So hence, simplifying, you can say x is equal to minus b upon 2a plus minus, this is nothing but under root b square plus 4ac upon twice of a, right? Because under root 4a square will come out as twice of a. So hence, it is nothing but minus b plus minus under root b square plus 4ac upon twice of a. Right, so this this completing the square method itself leads to let's say you know uh, solving the quadratic or finding the quadratic formula. If you see, this is nothing but the quadratic formula, quadratic formula, quadratic formula, where where we now know that x directly I can find out by deploying all the values here in terms of a, b, and c, and you can directly find x. Oh, I see. I'm really sorry. Yeah, there is some some error. This is huh? when I take C by A, it is, it is, it is, sorry for this error. This is not plus, this is minus. Thanks for correcting. So this is clearly minus. So hence, uh, here it is minus. I'm sorry. So all the pluses, plus C will be minus C. Yeah. So that's the correction. Thanks for correction. So this is plus, plus, plus everywhere. It is minus, 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 minus and minus yeah so minus b plus minus thanks Ruchir, for correcting minus b plus minus under root b square minus 4ac by twice of a that is what is quadratic formula so if you see there are two roots possible there are you know if you see there are plus and minus there are two roots possible one is called let's say alpha so alpha is minus b plus of under root b square minus 4ac upon twice of a and beta is minus b minus under root b square minus 4ac upon twice of a. These are the two, these are the two. Uh, okay, these are the two roots. Let's say if we have some previous year question on solving the quadratic equation by completing the square. So yes, so it, it, it is, uh, Okay, so there are lots of NCRT questions, but we will pick up something which has been asked in the previous year. So that, okay, so, okay, never mind. So let's solve this. Okay, so the question is solve by method of completing the square. What is the question? Question is, yeah, solve by completing the square. So the question says this, 4x square plus 4x square plus 3x 
फोर एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस थ्री एक्स प्लस फाइव प्लस फाइव इक्वल जीरो अगेन फोर एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस थ्री एक्स प्लस फाइव इक्वल टू जीरो ओके सो फर्स्ट स्टेप इज डिवाइडेड बाय ए सो हेंस इट विल बी एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस थ्री अपॉन फोर एक्स प्लस फाइव अपॉन फोर इक्वल जीरो ओके सो नाउ व्हाट डू आई डू एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस ट्वाइस ऑफ एक्स इनटू थ्री बाय एट वाइट बिकॉज आई हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई टू इन द डिनोमिनेटर ओके बट सिंस एंड देन द बी पार्ट हियर इज थ्री बाई एट सो हेंस यू हैव टू राइट थ्री बाई एट होल स्क्वायर But then, as you added something, you have to subtract also. So three by eight whole square, and then here it is plus five upon four, which is equal to zero. Okay. So hence, what do I get? I get x plus three by eight whole square is equal to three by eight whole square minus five upon four, minus five upon four. So let us simplify this. This is nine upon sixty-four. Right minus five upon four, which is nothing but sixty-four will be the LCM, and hence it is nine, and hence it is, hence it is, uh, hence it is nine minus sixteen four jar sixty-four, so sixteen five is the eighty, so here it is negative seventy-one by sixty-four. Now here is the problem. The problem is that there is a square term on the LHS, so LHS is greater than. Zero. Why? Because squares are always either zero or let's say positive value. But RHS, RHS is less than zero. It's a negative number. So this cannot, this is not possible. So hence we say there is no real root. There is no real root of this equation. Okay. So there is no real root to this equation. Fair enough. So this is what is called completing the square method, guys. So this is picked up now. Next is quadratic formula. So we saw quadratic formula hand in hand, and now please remember the the quadratic formula is what minus b plus minus under root b square minus four ac upon twice. Okay. Now b square minus four ac, guys, is called discriminant. What is it called? This is called d. And D is discriminant, discriminant. Okay, we will be using this thing a little later. Just keep this in mind, right? What is meant by D and how we use D for various or let's say finding out the nature of roots. Okay, let us take up one another uh, good problem on complete uh, using uh, solving the quadratic equation using completing the square method okay so so that you will get a little bit of more hands on okay now so the question is what is the question question says find the roots of the equation a square x square minus 3ab x 3ab x 3ab x plus 2b square plus Two b square is equal to zero. This is a yeah. There are no numerals here. It is a purely you know lots of uh, variable constant. So a square x square minus three ab x plus two b square equals to zero, and we will be solving it by completing the square method. Now again, what do we do? We divide the entire here in this case the coefficient of x is a square. So let us divide the entire equation by a square. So dividing dividing the equation the equation by a square. You will get x squared minus 3ab x upon a squared plus twice of b square upon sorry a squared and this is equal to zero. I'll write it a little clearly so that avoid overwriting so that you don't uh, get confused yourself and you know it's a uh, it's always a better practice to write as neatly as possible because you yourself. Should not be confused. So x square minus three ab x by a square plus two b square by a square equals to zero. So hence I can say this is nothing but let's you know. So hence x square. Uh, I have to now do what multiply by two and keep x here so that two x term is here and the rest of the term is three ab. So one a will be cancelled if you see one a will get cancelled by this. So hence I will write three. Three b by a, or in fact two a, because this one two a over here, so I'll have to add two 
or multiply denominator by 2 as well. So 3b by twice of a. Then now this becomes my b term. So hence I'll have to complete this square. So hence I can write 3b by twice of a whole square. Right? So now if you do this, the square gets completed. But since you have added an extra term to the equation, you have to remove it from it as well. So 3b by 2a whole square plus 2b square by a square. And this is equal to 0. So hence, what can I say from this thing? So this is x minus 3b upon twice of a whole square. Because if you see, this is the expansion, isn't it? This is the expansion of this first three terms. First three terms, these three terms here is the square term, right? And now this must be equated to, so take everything on the other side, you'll get 9b square. So 3b square is 9b square and then minus sign becomes positive. It's 4b square. And then here it is negative 2b square by a square. I'm sorry, this is not b square in the denominator. This is a square. This is a square. Okay, so yeah, a square, I'll write it properly so that you don't get confused. You should also avoid overwriting. Yeah, 9b square by 4a square minus 2b square by a square. So simplify this. What do you get? 4a square is the LCM. So hence it is 9b square and a square and multiplied by 2. So it is 8b square. So it is b square by 4, no, uh, b square by 4, a square. Yeah. So now if you remove the square sign, you take what? Do square root on both sides. You'll get x minus 3b upon twice of a is equal to plus minus b upon 2a. Okay. So hence, what do I get as solution? So x is nothing but 3b upon twice of a plus minus b upon twice of a. So, which is nothing but, so x alpha is nothing but 3b plus b upon twice of a, which is 4b by twice of a, which is 2b by a. This is solution number one. And solution number two beta is equal to 3b by twice of a minus b upon twice of a, which is nothing but 3b minus b upon twice of a, which is nothing but B upon A. So if you see uh, the equations to this, uh, sorry, the solutions to this equation will be x equals 2B by A and y equals B by A. Now, please remember, whenever you have such equations in, in, in the examination paper, always put a star mark against that question because you need to spare some time towards the end of the question paper as we have discussed multiple times to check the solution. So while you check the solution, uh, you can put any of these, if let's say if you have lesser time to revise, put any of these solutions, which one, which you think is a simpler one and see whether it went while plugged in into the equation, you get zero or not. That will be a good enough indication whether you have solved it correctly. Yes, if you have enough time, you can go through the entire solution once again. So use your judgment during the exam. If you have lesser time, plug in the solution and see whether you have solved it correctly or not. So, but during the rush hour, that means towards the last 10 minutes, you will not be knowing which question was to be revised once again. So hence, I told you that put a mark in the in the answer script somewhere, or you can write down towards the end that these questions need to be revised once again. Okay, fair enough. So let's move on to our next discussion. So here is, so we discussed this, roots of a quadratic equation can also be found by using the method of completing the square. And next is this quadratic formula. Now, here is an uh, important thing, which is anyways is discussed in the next slide. So let me go to the next slide. Now, here is where we are talking about nature of roots of a quadratic equation. Okay. So now there will be questions on nature of roots of quadratic equation. Yeah. So um, how, how do we find out? So if you see in our quadratic formula, let me just delete this. So we are now dealing with quadratic formula. As I told you previously, we will come back to the discriminant thing. And here is what I meant. So let's say, let's say your quadratic formula alpha was equal to minus b plus under root d upon twice of a, isn't it? And beta was also equal to minus b minus under root d upon twice of a, right? These are the two 
solution or two roots of the quadratic equation ax square plus bx plus c equals to 0. Now, the problem is if d, what was d? d is nothing but b square minus 4 of ac, right? Now, there is a root of d. So, hence, d must be greater than or equal to 0 for alpha and beta to be real. Isn't it? Why? Because there is no solution to, you know, square root of negative value in real number set. So, hence, d must be greater than or equal to 0. If d is less than 0, then we say that there are non-real solutions, right? Non-real non real solution those are those lie in the in the realm of complex numbers but in your cbsc 10th grade portions we are not going to deal with them so hence if d is less than 0 then there will be non real solution and if d is equal to 0 that means d equals to 0 then both the roots are equal isn't it so if you see alpha is also equal to minus b upon 2a and beta is also equal to minus b upon 2a so hence in this case we say equal real and equal roots real roots are definitely real but they are equal they are equal and third is d is greater than greater than uh, zero in this case you will have two distinct values of alpha and beta and we say that equations have real and distinct or real and different roots two uh, real and distinct this is the term distinct Roots. So you will get two roots which are different from each other. So please remember these three conditions. Questions will be asked on these. The question will be, you know, to find out some value of A, B, and C. Given that the roots are either distinct and real, uh, equal, real and unequal, or uh, real and equal, or, or not real, imaginary. Right? This can be question. We'll see such questions later on. Okay. Now let's go to the next slide. Okay, so this summarized, you know, so we kind of, you know, uh, these are the uh, theory portions related to quadratic equation. Now the questions would be either of, you know, let's discuss what type of questions would be could be asked. So in our experience in previous year papers also you have seen the questions asked are either of this form. They will give you solving the equation. Solving the equation. Okay, usually it is of two and three marks. So solving the equation will be one, right? And now they will ask you categorically. So please be very, very careful while you are solving the equation as in what kind of method they are asking. So if you see in the previous slide, I'll show you. So if you see here in the next slide, they are saying solve by factorization method. We just solved this question. This is actually a CBSE question. So it is categorically saying that solve by factorization method. So when, and be very, very caref careful whenever, you know, during excitement, what happens? People think that we know how to solve quadratic equation and they miss on the instruction given on the question paper, right? So don't miss on the instruction given on the question paper. When it says factorization method, you cannot apply a quadratic formula and when it is you know when it's nothing is mentioned then it is your choice whether you, you can use um, your factorization method you want to complete the square or uh, you want to use quadratic formula most of the questions which will be there in the cbsc board paper they will be you know kind of uh, uh, you know they, you can solve it by factorization method mostly most of them okay so hence it's always Good to solve through factorization method because uh, it is you know simpler also and lesser prone to calculation mistakes. But yes, it is always a good practice to come back and check it using a quadratic formula whether you have got the correct you know. So in, in the in the rough side, you can always do a quickly you know quick check and then see whether the solution which you have arrived at is correct or not. Right? See all the theory which we discussed, you would be knowing it already. Now the problem would be when you'll be solving the questions, either you will misread the question and hence lose marks, or while solving it, you will make careless mistake and then again miss marks. And then as we were discussing, these were the types of question which will be asked, especially in the word problem. If you misinterpret the question, then you might lose marks. So hence, please be very, very careful about it. So hence, what type of questions I talk, I told you, either it will be solving the equation. So hence, be careful. What is the method is, what is the method which is being asked? Whether it is a factorization method, so you have to 
So the moment it is a factorization method, you have to use the splitting the middle term method. So you can't use the quadratic formula. Yes, you can always check it through a quadratic formula. Then they will ask you categorically completing the completing the square method. So then you know what to do. You divide the entire equation by the coefficient of x square, complete the square, and then take under root. And do not forget to take both plus and minus of uh, you know the square root of the term which you will be obtaining. So there is one mistake people generally do. Then third is uh, a quadratic formula where it is always a good practice to write the value of a, b, c by the side of the paper. So please do write what is a, what is b, what is c. In in this in this what happens is let's say if there is a negative number and they will try to trick you with giving some negative number and usually people you know forget that negative sign so it's always good practice to write a what is a then b and then c then write the quadratic formula and then then write the full you know uh, whenever you are deploying the number you should be careful for the sign so hence these are the three questions three type of questions which could be asked direct questions solving differential equations uh, sorry quadratic equations now second point is questions on nature of roots so second type of question will be nature of roots so you know on nature of roots so you know what is it so you have to deal with discriminant yeah so discriminant is b square minus 4ac so be careful so they will be you know do not write b square plus 4ac which i did it some time ago so you must be very very careful of the signs which you are using and you know uh, remember it uh, properly so hence D equals to B, B square minus 4AC and then either it is greater than equal to 0 or less than 0. Basis that they will ask you under what conditions the nature of roots would be equal, unequal or unreal, not, not real, imaginary. All those things would be there. They will, uh, for example, if I go back to the slide, let me see. I have put one question which was a one marker. Usually a one marker or a two marker question is then always a word problem. Never mind. So we'll come to the word problems as well. So, uh, you know, so the one market question could be that, I, in fact, I have shot a few videos. If you go, if you go to our, you know, YouTube channel, you can see all those questions, you know, solved there. So you can always go through the previous year question, questions there. Yeah. So nature of roots. Third will be, third will be of uh, word problems, right? So there could be word problems on, on quadratic equations, right? So they will give you. So let us take one word problem which was asked in previous year and let us try and solve that question. So hence, here is the question. The question says, the numerator of a fraction is three less than the denominator. I have solved this question also and have posted the solution online on our YouTube channel. So you can go there and see that. So the, num the numerator of a fraction is three, wait a minute, I'm sorry, three less than, yeah. So the numerator, of a fraction is three less than the denominator. Okay, the numerator of a fraction is three less than the denominator. So I will highlight this three less than denominator. So if I now know if x is the numerator, the numerator of a fraction is three less than the denominator. That means denominator is x plus three. Okay, this is the fraction. If uh, two is added to both the numerator and the denominator, so let us add two, so it, hence it is x plus two and the denominator becomes x plus five. And uh, if this is the case, two is added to both the numerator and the denominator, then the sum of the new fraction and the original fraction is 29 by 20. So hence, what can I say? Okay, so hence it is, let me, you know, uh, so just 29 by 20 is the sum. So let me go to this slide and then solve it here. So let us say, so, yeah, so, yeah, so we'll solve it here. Okay, so let us say, uh, they're saying that numerator is three less than the denominator and two is ordered to both numerator and denominator and the sum of the two is 29 by 20, let us, Please read the question at least two times to make sure that you do not misread the question. The numerator of a fraction is 3 less than the denominator, so x upon x plus 3, and 2 is added to both the numerator and the denominator. Then the sum of the new fraction and the original fraction is 29 upon 20, and you have to find the original fraction. Very good. So basically, now you have to find out x upon x plus 3. 
Clearly, this is not a quadratic equation in this form, but it can be reduced to one. How? Let us do take the LCM. So hence, if you say take the LCM, x plus 3 and x plus 5 on the denominator, and here it is x times x plus 5, and here it is x plus 2 times x plus 3, and this is equal to 29 upon 20. Guys, 29 is a very hot, you know, it's a prime number, and you know, uh, the moment you see a number like 29, there's a uh, thought in the mind that it will be difficult to multiply with 29. So be very, very cautious. So hence there, so one thing which happens in these question is, what is that? That is, you are prone to do careless mistakes or calculation mistakes. Please always remind yourself that there is a possibility of careless mistakes. So be very, very cautious. Okay. So let us, you know, uh, try and solve this. So x times x is x squared plus 5x, then here, uh, if you know the identity, you can use what is the identity? Let's say x plus a into x plus b. I know the identity is nothing but x square plus a plus b x plus a b, right? If you know that, then you can easily do, do this multiplication or you can do a proper step by step multiplication. So I will say, if you don't remember, then you multiply step by step. So then it is x square plus 3x plus 2x plus 6 right and it is always a good practice to count the number of terms also so that you don't have you 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 shouldn't miss any particular term so a uh, product of two factors which two terms each will give you four terms so let's see i have got four terms right and the, in the denominator again i should get four terms what is it x square plus 5x plus 3x plus 15 so four terms right and then here it is 29 upon 20 okay now simplify x square plus x square is 2x square and 5x plus 3x plus 2x is plus 10x isn't it and then it is 6 and then in the denominator it is x squared plus 8x plus 15 equals 29 upon 20. Now is the time to do cross multiplication so hence it is 20 times 2x square plus 10x plus 6 i hope i am not making any mistake on uh, 29 anyways will be checking so 29x square plus 8x plus 15 exactly this is this will be the scenario when you will be writing the exam so let us now calculate it is nothing but 40x square then then it is uh, 200x isn't it 20 into 2 is 40, so 20, 200, and then it is 120. And this is 29x squared plus 8 into 29 is nothing but 8 into 30 minus 8. So this is 232, I believe. So 8, 9 is 72, 7, carry 7, 16 plus 7, 2, 32, and there is an x. And 29 into 15 is 30 into 15, which is uh, 450 minus 15, that is 435. So if uh, 435 right hence if you simplify 40 minus 29 is 11x square 200x plus or minus 232x is minus 32x i believe i hope i am not yeah and then 120 minus 435 is how much it is 235 uh, sorry this is 215 right 5 and 1 2 3 and 2 uh, sorry, 315. Right? No, 120 minus 435 is. So check multiple times so that no worries, you know, uh, because if you make one mistake and then the entire thing will go for a toss. Yeah, 315 equals to 0. Okay, so this is my equation. Let me write the equation afresh or let me get some space to write on. Okay, so the equation is what is the equation? The equation is 11x square minus 32x minus 315 is equal to zero. Now, either we can go for a quadratic formula, but then I am, I say, you know, let us try and see if I can get a, so 11 into 315. This is a negative 11 into 315. This is AC, right? Now we have to split it in such a way that I get a sum of 32, right? right? How do we do it? 11 is a prime number. So let's factorize 315 which is nothing but 3 into 105 or 9 into, yeah, so it is nothing but 9 into 
35, right? So hence it is nothing but minus 11 into 3 square into 7 into 5. Correct, this is my, yeah. So now I need to find out, I need to break it in such a way. Now, again, if you see AC is negative. So now if AC is negative, I have to break this B in such a way that it is a sum of two numbers, but one number has to be greater than the other in this case. Okay, this is a, this is the case, right. Now let us see. So nine and seven, nine, five, 45 and 63. Uh, okay, so if you see 77, and nine, ha, 77 and 45, I think. Uh, so it is 77 and 45. Yeah, so if you see 77 minus 45, if you see 11 into 7 is 77, and 9 into 5 is 45, 7, 5, 7 minus 5 is 2, 7, so 32, right? So it, it works. So hence I can say it is 11x square minus 77x plus 45x minus 315 equals 0 okay so this means this means this is 11 x x minus 7 plus 45 x minus 7 equals 0 check with 7 into 45 is 3 and 15 yes uh, 7 into 5 yeah 3 and 15 right it's correct so hence it is x minus 7 and 11x plus 45 equals 0, right? This implies either x equals to 7 or x equals to negative 45 by 11. Now, clearly the fraction was, uh, you know, uh, the, the term has to be positive, right? It was said that it is a integer. Let's go back to the question once and see what was the question. So the numerator was 3 less than the denominator. If So hence it has to be you know, uh, an integer. So hence, clearly, I get one integer. So x equals to 7 is one solution. So hence, the, the fraction will be 7 upon 7 plus 3, that is 7 upon 10. Now, quickly check whether this is correct or not. So 7 by 10 plus add 2 to numerator and denominator must be equal to 29 by 20. Let's check whether that is correct or not. So 10 and 12, if you see 60 is the LCM. So this is 6 into 7, 42. And then this is 12 into 5. And 9, 5 is the 45. So, and it is 87 by 60. So, divided by 3, you will get 29 by 20. That means it is correct. It is correct. So, hence, the fraction is 7 upon 10. This was our previous year question paper. So, these are usually the questions which are asked in, you know, quadratic equation uh, topic. Let us take a few more and see whether we are Okay, uh, okay, so let me give you, let me solve another problem, which is, yes. Okay, so let me take another CBSC problem. Now, the question is, let me go to a new slide. Okay, so now the question is, uh, find the values of k for which the given equation has real and equal roots. And this is CBSE 2000, CBSE 2015 question. Even if the pattern has changed, the nature of question will be similar. So the question is, find the value of k, find the value of k, k, such that, such that, such that, such that, k plus 1, k plus 1, x squared minus 2 times k minus 1, k plus 1, x squared minus 2 times k minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0. Again, read the question carefully, again and again, don't misread the question. So find the value of k such that the equation k plus 1 x squared minus twice k minus 1 x plus 1 equals to 0, 0 has, has real, real and equal roots. Equal roots. Now this is another way of testing. You know what they will do is they will give you 
a quadratic equation within a quadratic equation in terms of you know so you uh, in this question also though you have to find out the coefficient here but actually it will lead to let's say you know use of solving a quadratic equation itself so what is the condition for real and equal roots you know that condition number 2 that means d must be equal to 0 what was d d was b square minus 4ac so b square minus 4ac must be equal to 0 yeah so what is what did i tell you write a b and c so what is a a is k plus 1 right b is negative twice k minus 1 and c is clearly 1 c is clearly 1 right now let us find out the value of d so b square so hence write 2 k minus 1 and do not hesitate to put as many braces as possible so twice square minus 4 into a a is k plus 1 and c is 1 so 1 and this must be equal to 0 so for real and equal roots this must be satisfied now if you see what is it if you square it the negative sign has got no effect so it is 4 k minus 1 whole squared minus 4 k minus 4 must be equal to 0 is it i have expanded it and now let us expand this what is it 4 times k square minus 2 k plus 1 a plus b plus you know a plus b whole square is a square plus twice a b plus b squared so hence you do this minus 4k minus 4 equals 0. So if you if you simplify this, this is 4k square minus 8k plus 4, right? Keep keep you know checking again immediately. Immediate check also helps a lot to eliminate any careless mistakes. We so quickly go back and see 4k square minus 8k plus 4 quickly, and then minus 4k minus 4 equals 0. Now what is it? This is 4k squared. And then minus 8k minus 4k is minus 12k. Do not make mistakes in adding with signs. And then 4 and minus 4 is 0. So it's 0. Right? This, this makes our job a little easier because now you don't need to go for any you know uh, complex method of solving the equation. Why? Because the coefficient is 0. So hence what you can do is you can plug it, plug out what? 4k is common. So hence it is k minus 3 equals 0. So hence you get either k must be equal to 0 or k must be equal to 3. Okay, so either k must be equal to 0 or k must be equal to 3. Let us check whether that is actually the value the case. So if you if you put k equals to 0 in this equation, what will you get? You will get x square minus x square plus 2x plus 1 equals to 0, which is an identity. If you see, if you put k equals to 0, this is a check, right? If you put k equal to 0, you will get x square plus twice of x plus 1 equals 0, which is nothing but x plus 1 whole square is equal to 0. That means it has two roots, both are equal. What are the roots? x equals to 1 and 1. Both are equal. So, hence, for k equals to 0, it is valid. Let us check whether it is valid for k equals to 3 also. So, in case x k equals to 3, then what will happen? It will be 4x square minus 4x plus 1. Indeed, it is 2x minus 1 whole square is equal to 0. So, x equals to half and x equals to half are the two equal and real roots. So, hence, hence, both the solution that is k equals to 0 and k equals to 3 will satisfy the condition and the equation will then have real and equal roots. Okay. So, let us take another problem from previous year paper. So usually these will be, let's say, uh, you know, either a one marker or a two marker question mostly. Okay. Now the question is, there's a interesting question and though it is not a previous year question, but then it could be asked in exam. So let us say, the question says, uh, <clears throat> Show that the equation, the question is, show that, show that the equation, show that the equation x squared plus ax, x squared plus ax minus 4 equals to 0. 
has real has real has real and distinct distinct roots distinct roots distinct has real and distinct roots for all real values of a for all for all real values of values of a again read the question once again make it a habit show that the equation x square plus 8x minus 4 sorry not 8x x square plus ax minus 4 equals 0 has real and distinct roots for all real values of a okay so clear so what is the condition for real and distinct roots you know d must be greater than 0 right not even equal it has to be greater than 0 okay so let us find out d d is nothing but for a quadratic equation it is b square minus sorry 4ac is it now what is b here the b value is a if you see don't get confused here the b value is a so hence i will write a square minus 4ac so minus 4 times 1 a is 1 in this question so this don't get confused by this a yeah, this A is nothing but B in our general equation. And here the A value is 1 and C value is negative 4. So hence, negative 4 is equal to A square plus 16. Correct? Now, A is a real number. A is a real number, isn't it? So hence, A square is always greater than or equal to 0. Because real number squares cannot be negative, right? So A square is always greater than or equal to 0. So clearly a square plus 16 is always greater than 0. Now it cannot be said as equal to 0 because 16 is added to a non-negative number. So a square plus 16 is always greater than 0. Whatever is the value of a. Isn't it? So hence b is always greater than 0. Hence it is a condition for e, uh, real. Sorry. It is a condition for real and distinct, distinct roots. Fair enough. So this is on nature of roots. Let us now take few more different type of question. Okay. Another question. Let's say let's take another previous year question. So the latest or other, you know, so let's say take let's take up CBSC 2014. Okay, now the question again is on the nature of roots nature of roots and the question is asking this uh, find the value of k so again find find the value of k find the value of k for which for which for which for which the roots for which the roots roots are Roots are real and equal, real and equal for the following, for the following equation. Okay. And what is the equation given? In CBSE 2014, this question was asked and this is Px times x minus 3 plus 9 equals 0. This is which year? This is CBSE. 2014 not that you know uh, not long back now again read the question once more the question says find the values of k for which the roots are real and equal again real and equal for e for following equation what is the equation px times x minus 3 plus 9 equals 0 now if you see there is no direct x square term which you can see but it is hidden right so, you know, uh, don't get you know, confused. You can see that if you expand this, you will get a square term. So, if you see, it is nothing but px squared minus thrice px. 3 times px plus 9 equals 0. Now, for real and equal, what do I know? d must be equal to 0 for real and equal roots. Isn't it? So that is so, then what is D? D is B square minus 4AC must be equal to 0. Now what is B? B in this case is negative 3P. If you see, negative 3P is B. 
So B square, that is square of this, minus 4 into P into 9 must be equal to 0. So if you see, this is 9P square minus 36P equals 0. You can, uh, you need not multiply it here also because there is a, you know, you can extract a common factor. So you can now say 9P into P minus 4, isn't it, equals 0. So if this is the case, then either P equals to 0 or P must be equal to 4. Again, there are two solutions to this. So let us check if P equals to 0. Actually, P cannot be 0. If you see, P cannot be 0. Why? In a quadratic equation, the, the coefficient cannot be 0. So hence, you have to write P cannot be 0. Or you can write P can't be 0, can't be 0 can't be 0 because you name it as 1 and say because because 1 is a quadratic equation. But hence, let us check what is whatever if p equals to 4. So if p equals to 4, the equation becomes 4x square. Let us check. So let us check 4x square minus this check you don't do while solving the question in the main sheet. You can always do it in the rough. So 4x square minus 3 into p, p is 4 again, into x plus 9, isn't it? So which is nothing but this is, uh, yeah, so this is 2x whole square minus, uh, yeah, so this is 2 into 2x into 3, if you see, yeah, 4x into 3 is this, plus 3 square, this is equal to 0, this is equal to 0, and hence it is 2x minus 3 whole square is equal to 0. So hence, there is only one solution, uh, and equal roots, right? What is that? 3x plus 3 by 2. So hence, p is equal to 4 is the right answer. Okay, guys. So we solved this question also on nature of roots. Let us go and solve some word problems now. Okay, there are different types of word problems. We'll take up one by one, each, you know, uh, we just uh, saw numerator and denominator kind of a, yeah, uh, yes, let us take up some previous year questions. First is on digits of a, yeah, so let us take up some previous year questions. Next is, uh, meanwhile guys, if you have any question in, uh, in, your, in your, uh, mind or let's say if you are not able to solve anything you can always post it here or through whatsapp and uh, we will be able to solve it and post it here okay let us take another question so question it was asked this question was asked in 2006 question was asked in 2006 cbse what is the question Question is a two digit number, a two digit number, two digit number is such that, is such that the product of its digit, that the product, product of its digits, digits is 18. Okay, when 63, when 63 is subtracted, when 63 is subtracted from the number, from the number, from the number, the digits interchange their places. The digits interchange their places their places so you have to find the number find the number once again read the question once again so that you don't make a mistake okay the question says a two digit number is such that the product of its digits is 18 when 63 is subtracted from the number the digits interchange their places find the number now this is interesting interchanging of the digits right so let's say two digit number is such that the product of its digit is 18 so if one digit let 
you will write like this let the let one of the digits one of the digits be x then the other digit will be 18 upon x now in such questions you know that digits will be an integer right and digit what integer from 0 to 9 but clearly x is not 0 why because if x were 0 <coughs> i'm sorry guys so if x is 0 then you will not get the product of the two digits as 18 also x cannot be 18 why so you can do is this thing should go in your mind parallelly. You don't need to stop and think like this, but I'm just giving you a hint to you know how to eliminate your you know or how to get to answers. And you can it is also can help you in let's say checking whether you have done it correctly or not. So x clearly cannot be 18 because if you see 18 is the product of two digits, two digits 18. So 18 can be 1 into 18, 18 can be equal to 2 into 9. So here is one possibility. 18 can be also written as 3 into 6, another possibility, right? And then 6 into 3, and then 9 into 2, and then 18 into 1 again. So hence, if you see either it will be, you know, so either of these solutions will be there. Okay, but let's let's go ahead and see whether we are doing it correctly or not. So, uh, yeah, now the second is, when 63 subtracted from the number, so what is the number, guys? Let's say x is uh, unit space. Okay, so let's say x is in unit space, or one of the digits b x. Let's say you also write unit space. Unit space. Okay, so what is the number? So the number is the number will be nothing but uh, 10 into 18 upon x plus x. This is the number, right? Why? Because if you if you are having a two digit number, let's say a b, then the value of the number is a into 10 plus b. All of you know this. I'm not writing, I'm explaining it again. So this is the number 10 into 18 upon x plus x. Now, what are they saying? If 63 subtracted from the number, the digit interchanges. So let us subtract some number uh, 63 from it. So 180 by x plus x minus 63. So we do that, that the number. The digits interchange in space. So units becomes tens and tens becomes units. So it will be now 10x plus 18 by x. So this is the question. Now, once you are done with formulating an equation, your job is half done. You are now, you have to just solve the equation. So let us see, let us try and solve. Okay. So once the, you know, it is a better uh, practice to check once again whether the uh, the, the formulation of the equation is correct or not. So if you see this is 10x, so 10 times the digit at the tens place plus the units place digit minus 63 is equal to the reversal of digits. Okay, looks good. So let us now solve it by collating all the x terms together. So if you see, this is nothing but 180 by x. And uh, so let's take everything on the right hand side. This means that 10x minus x is 9x. Okay, so this x will go on to the right hand side. If you are not comfortable with that, then you please write full step, full step will be this. 10x plus 18 by x, and then this becomes minus 180 by x. This becomes minus x and plus 63 equals 0. Okay, but directly also you can write as what? So 9x and then uh, 9 and then 180 minus 18. So this is nothing but 162 by x, right? And then plus 63 equals 0. Isn't it? So 9x minus 162 by x plus 63 equals to 0. You can make it, it is not a quadratic form right now, but you can reduce it to 1. So it is 9x squared minus 162 plus 63x equals 0, right? So hence it is x. 9x squared. Yeah, so if you see, you can actually take out one 9 from everywhere. Isn't it? All are multiples of 9. All the coefficients are multiple of 9. So you can say x squared, strike of 9, minus this is 18x, sorry, 18, and this is 7x equals 0. Yeah, so hence it is x squared 
plus 7x minus 18 equals 0. This implies you can write x square minus 9x plus 2x, sorry, the other way around. So hence, this is what I was saying. Please be very, very, every step you just do a mental recalculation. So plus 9 and minus 2x minus 18 equals 0. This implies you can take x as common from the first two terms, so x plus 9. And this is negative 2 common from the second last two terms, x plus 9 equals 0. And hence, I am writing it here. Now it is nothing but x plus 9 times x minus 2 equals 0, x equals to negative 9 or x equals 2, right? Clearly, x equals to negative 9 is not a solution because we are talking about digits. Digits are between 0 to 9, both inclusive. So, x equals to 2 will be the right answer. So, when x equals to 2, the number is 18 by 2, 92. So, hence the number is 92. Right, 92. Now, if you subtract 63 from here, what will you get? You will get uh, 29. You should get 29. So, if you see, 92 minus 63 is actually 29. So, hence the number, the digits are interchanging its places, right? So, hence our solution is correct. Okay, so this was another type of problem. Let's go to another one, another different type. Okay. So let us solve another, yeah. Now, uh, quadratic equations for solving problems on time and distance. So we'll take up one time and distance problem also. This is also very common, commonly asked, okay. Yeah. So let me use the space, yeah. So the question again, question is this, and I'll take up a previous year paper question okay. so this is again 2006 paper which is there so there is absolutely no problem in solving a little older questions also why because the pattern of the question remains the same or rather we can take up a recent one so 2000 the question is a motor board a motor board motor boat whose speed in still water whose speed in still water still water is is 18 kilometers per hour also be mindful of the units okay takes takes one hour more one hour more to go to go 24 kilometer 24 kilometer upstream 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 than than to return down return downstream downstream to the same spot to the same spot okay find the speed of the stream find you have to find the speed of the stream okay so once again a motor boat whose speed in still water is 18 kmph 18 kilometers per hour it takes one hour more to go 24 kilometer up stream that to return downstream to the same spot find the speed of the stream okay so we'll so whatever is required you assume that to be the variable that is a common trend or common practice find the speed of the stream so i'll say let the let the speed speed of the stream be x kilometers per hour write the units here itself so that even if you miss writing units little you know in the last step then you know it should not make or you, you should not attract any penalty now a motorboat whose speed in still water is 18 kilometers per hour obviously when it is going downstream its speed will be more why because the velocity of the water will aid 
the velocity of the motorboat. And while it is going upstream, it, it, it will have a uh, lesser speed, isn't it? So now it is saying one hour more. So what is what is you know what is constant here? The constant is the speed, uh, sorry, the distance, right? So distance traveled upstream is equal to distance traveled downstream. So what is distance traveled distance? Uh, oh, okay. 20, 24 kilometers is given actually. Anyways, one hour more to go 24 kilometer upstream. Okay, so 20 distance is 24 kilometers. So distance is equal to speed into time. We know that. In case the if speed is constant, then distance is speed into time. So hence, 24 kilometers is equal to speed of let's say while going upstream, uh, it takes time okay so uh, so the speed was x and it is 8 right so hence huh. so what will happen so let us write this thing separately so hence velocity upstream that means when the uh, or the speed upstream when the steamer or the boat is going upstream the velocity will be um, 18 minus x kilometers per hour, isn't it? Kilometers per hour. Why? Because the velocity will be reduced because the motor boat has to go against the speed of the stream. Okay. Now, and velocity downstream, downstream is equal to 18 plus x kilometers per hour. Isn't it? 18 plus x kilometers per hour. Now, so while it is going upstream, so distance is 24 into up. Um, yeah, so time low. So hence we'll say time upstream. Okay, time upstream is equal to nothing but distance by speed, isn't it? So distance is 24 and speed for upstream is 18 minus x. Okay, time downstream is equal to 24 upon 18 plus x. Now, if you see in both the t up and t down, 24, the numerator remains same. Denominator is more in the second case. So, hence t down is less, which is quite obvious. The denominator is more here. Denominator is less here. So, hence t down, that means going downstream, the speed, uh, sorry, time taken will be lesser. Now, there is a difference between the two times. Obviously, this is more, isn't it? t up will be more than t down. But there's a relationship given. What is that? It takes one hour more to go up. That means I can write t up is equal to t down plus one. Isn't it? So hence, what is t up? So let's now form the equation. So 24 upon 18 minus x is equal to 24 upon 18 plus x plus one. So time, I calculated time up. I calculate time down. And then I know time up is one hour more to go upstream, right? So this is my, so you will get 50% of the marks here itself when you are writing the equation correctly. Now, the, the question remains to solve this. The other half is to solve the question correctly now. So hence, let us solve this. Now, how to solve this? You have to write 24 upon 18 minus x minus 24 upon 18 plus x equals 1 after rearranging take lcm so it is and 24 is common so you can write 24 into 18 plus x and then here it is and in the denominator first write the denominator so 18 minus x times 18 plus x denominator and hence 24 is common so 18 plus x minus minus 18 minus x like that right equals 1 now what is it so if you see 18 minus 18 will get cancelled it will become 2x in the denominator so 2x so hence it is 24 into 2x upon 18 minus x times 18 plus x equals 1 okay so hence if you see if you see the next is Solve this to this 48x is equal to 18 minus x and 18 plus x. 
Okay, so this is 48x is equal to 18 into 18. So I'm not multiplying, I'm just keeping it like that because you know we'll see if we can factorize it later on. And then, oh, so it is 18 square minus x square, plain and simple. 18x minus 18 plus x is a square minus b square. Now the final equation is x square minus, sorry, plus 48x minus 18 into 18. So I am purposefully keeping it, I'm not multiplying because anyways you have to factor it. Okay, so let us see how do I split 48 to get 18 into 18. Okay, so hence what is 18 into 18? 18 into 18 is 81 into 4. So if you see this is nothing but 18 into 18. What is it? It is nothing but 3 square into 2 into 3 square into 2, right? So 99, 81 into 4, that which is nothing but 4. Uh, 324 yeah but you have to break this 18 into 18 in such a way that you get 48 so obviously since it is a negative number so you have to break in such a manner that it is 48 is difference of two numbers whose product is 18 into 18 okay so let us try and see if we can get uh, 48 here so if you see it is um how do we so let's say 9 into 4 so yes, um, six. So nine into four is thirty. Yeah, no. Um, so how do we break it? So if you see, um, for forty, right? So hence I have to let's let's break them. So hence clearly, three. I am doing it here. So eighteen into eighteen can be written as three into or not, let's start with two. So two into what is left? Nine eighty one into. 9, 9, 9 into 9, 81, 81 into 2 is 162. This this will not work. Then 3 into, this is also not, is not, not going to work. Why? Because it is too, uh, too, 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 too big a number for having a difference of 48. So hence, we have to find, let's say, um, 3 into 4 is 12. And here it is. No, we'll have to 6 into uh, 6 and rest is... 20, 54, ah, 54 and 6 is the number. If you see how 3 into 2 is 6. So 6, if you see 6 and 54 is the other factor, right? So 6 into 4 is, uh, 6 into 54 is 324, correct? So hence this will work and 54 minus 6 is 48. So hence I get x square plus 54x minus 6x minus 324 equals 0. So this implies this implies x into x plus 54 minus 6 times x plus 54 equals 0. And hence, yeah, so hence if you see this is nothing but x plus 54 and x minus 6 equals 0. So either x equals to negative 54 or x equals to 6. But speed cannot be speed cannot be negative, right? This cannot be negative. So hence, we say speed cannot be negative, can't be negative. So hence, solution is x equals to six kilometers per hour, right? This is the solution. This was asked in 2014, CBSE. Let's take up another type. Now it is nothing but on ages, let's say there is a question on uh, age. Okay, so this is another type you will get. Let us solve this. This is again a CBSE 2010 question. CBSE 2010 question. Yeah, question says a girl is twice old as her sister. A girl is twice as old as her sister yeah you have to convert these into expressions right mathematical expressions four year four years hence four years hence now in in four years hence the product of their ages the product product of their ages the product of their ages 
will be, or it's mentioned in years, will be, will be 160, 160, find their present ages, find their present, present ages, present ages, present ages. So, a girl is twice as old as her sister. So, hence you have to be careful about, you know. Years hence, please be careful. Many, many of you, what you do is you augment the age of one that you forget to add to the age of the other. Right? So, this is a common mistake which we have observed. Now, so uh, what is the question? Find their present ages. Okay, so we are saying the let the ages present ages present ages. Of the sisters B, X, X and X and X plus, oh sorry, not, so twice X, right? So X and two X. So it is twice as old, twice as old as her sister, right? So X and two X, four year hence. The product of their ages will be 160. So four year hence. Four years hence. The ages of sisters would be how much? Would be x plus four and x plus four. And now the product they are saying so x plus four and two x plus. 4 is equal to 160. So you have to find out what is the value of x. So let us simplify this. This is 2x squared plus 4x, 2x squared plus 4x plus 8x plus 8x plus 8x and then 16 equals 160. Let me quickly check whether it is correct or not. So what is it? 2x square, that's correct. Then 4x, that's correct. 4 into 2, 8x, that's also correct. And 4 into 4 is 60, which is equal to 160. So this implies how much 2x squared plus 12x plus, or sorry, minus 144 equals 0. You can eliminate 2 from here. You can eliminate two from here. This is the question. This is the quadratic equation. So half the marks will be given here itself if you have done it correctly. So hence eliminating two, you will write x square plus six x minus seventy-two equals zero. Now you can write dividing, dividing the equation by two. Isn't it? Now it boils down to solve this question. So hence it is, if you see, um, 72. So 72 is to be broken in such a way that, such that the product is 72, but the sum is 6. So it is no brainer here. You can do it as plus or uh, plus 12x minus 6x minus 72 is equal to 6, 0. Why? Right? Because 12, 6 are 72. If you now do this, take common, this is x plus 12 minus 6, x plus 12 equals 0. So this is x plus 12 into x minus 6 equals 0. So hence, so hence my dear friend, x is equal to negative 12 or x equals to 6. But clearly this is not a feasible solution, not a feasible feasible solution why because age cannot be age cannot be negative so x equals to 6 is the right solution okay so the ages of the sisters will be ages of the or you should write present ages 
present ages of the sisters are six and twice of six, two into six equals to 12 years. This is about, you know, ages problem. Okay. Hmm. Now there will be few application of the same in geometry. You know, you can use Pythagoras theorem, there will be illustrations in that. Then in menstruation, they can also combine uh, a problem in geometry or mensuration. So we'll take up one of that sort. So let us see what is other type of other application. So one is, uh, you know, again, CBSC 2000, CBSC 2015 question. Now this question says, the area, the area of an isosceles triangle, isosceles triangle, isosceles triangle is 60 centimeters squared. And, and the length, and the length of, of each one of its, of its equal, equal sides, equal sides is 13 centimeter, is 13 centimeter. Okay, find its base. Find its base. So let's read the question once again. The area of an isosceles triangle is 60 centimeters square, and the length of each one of its equal sides is 13. Find its find its base. Very good. Let's try and solve this problem. So isosceles triangle will have to make. Okay, so this is my isosceles triangle. Let's see. So in geometry problems, please do not forget to make a diagram. Okay. Now, the area of an isosceles triangle. So what is an area of an isosceles triangle? So you have to draw a perpendicular from here. So always draw, always draw a figure whenever you are solving a uh, geometry problem. Okay. So this is a rough diagram where you do, you know, you can use it for this purpose. Now, what is it given? Right? So each of the equal sides. So this is 13 centimeter. 13. So let's say A, B, C. So it's given. What is given? Given is A, B is equal to A, C is equal to 13 centimeter. Okay. And area of triangle A, B, C is equal to 60 cm square. Okay. Now I have to find to find what? To find what? BC. Okay. Now construction. What did you do? Construction. Drop or you write here AD AD perpendicular to BC. Okay. Now clearly in an isosceles triangle, you know that BD is equal to BD is equal to DC, right? You can write the reason in an isosceles triangle. Triangle. The perpendicular from from the vertex vertex bisects the non equal side okay so so let us say bd is equal to right so let us say bd let bd is equal to x okay so you have to find bd now if bd is equal to x then ad is equal to nothing but under root 13 square minus x square isn't it? AD is 30 by, and you write the reason by Pythagoras. By Pythagoras theorem. Okay. Now, what do we now do? So, I now know the x. So, area, area of triangle. So, half into 2x, half into base, into height. 
that is AD will be equal to 60. That is what is given. Okay, so hence half into 2x. So I can just cancel this 2 off. So x into AD. What is AD under root? Is equal to 60. Isn't it? So hence, if you so and then you'll write. What will you write? You will write squaring both sides. These steps, please do not forget. Squaring both sides. Right? You'll get x square into 13 square minus x square is equal to 60. Is it? So hence it is nothing but uh, 13x square minus x to the power 4 is equal to 60. Or you can write x to the power 4 minus 13x square is equal to, oh, sorry, uh, plus 60 is equal to 0. Right? So I hope we are doing yeah, 13 square minus x square. Yeah, half into 2x, half into, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, half into 2x into AD, which is 13 square minus x square is 60. So hence, hence you will get x to the power 4 minus 13x square. Oh no, uh, wait a minute, square, this will be, this is a mistake, this is square. So this will not be 60, this will be, sorry, this will be 3600 plus 3600 equals to 0. So please be very, very um, careful. Oh, this is also 13 square, right? So please be very, very careful when you are doing this. So hence, it is nothing but x to the power 4 minus 169x square plus 3600 equals 0. Okay, so again, either you can go for a uh, quadratic formula thing, and also it is a biquadratic equation. So you can say let x square be y. You can solve it here itself, or you can simplify by saying let x square equals to y. So the equation is re uh, reduced to y square minus 169y plus 3600. Okay, so now if you see. If you if you try to split 3600, so 36 into 100 is 1, but 100 plus 36 is not 136, so we'll have to do a little bit more. So if you see, it is uh, also, um, this is actually 44 into 125. Yes. Yes. So 125 into 44 actually will give you uh, 3600. Mm. Yes, that's fine. I think it is correct. I'm sorry, not 40. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. The other way around. Uh, 144 into 25. 125 doesn't divide 3600. So it is 144 into 25. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So 144 into 25. Yeah. Is this that is, that is Yeah. So this is equal to 0. So hence, hence, what will you say? You will say y square minus 44y minus 1. Uh, sorry, 144y minus 25, minus 25, write it properly, don't overwrite, so yeah, minus, minus 25y plus 3600 equals 0, okay, uh, yes, so hence it is y times, so I'm writing it here, y times y plus 144, Yeah, so y times y plus 144 and then y plus 144 anyways will be taken out and here it will be simply minus 25 equals to 0. Am I right? Uh, not, oh sorry, wait wait a minute, there is this thing, yeah, so that's what the problem is. So please write it very clearly. So it will not be plus, it will be minus. Right? And here also this is... So hence it is y minus 144 into y minus 25 equals 0. So either y is 144 or y is 25. These are the two possible solutions. So if y is 244 guys, then what will be x? x square was equal to y, isn't it? So hence we can write that means x square 
is 144. So x equals 12. I am neglecting minus 12. Why? Because my negative 12 cannot be dimension of a triangle. So hence x equals 12. And from here, x square equals 25. So x will be simply 5. Again, I am ignoring the negative values. Ignoring x equals to negative 12. These all these will definitely be the solution to these equations, but they will not be feasible solution. X equals to negative 5. Ignoring these, right? So x x is 5 or x equals to 12 centimeter. So hence, hence you have to find out the base. So for the lack of space, I'm writing it here. So the base BC will be twice of x, that is either 10 centimeter or 24 centimeters. Okay, this is how you will be solving these sums. So I thought, I think uh, we have uh, covered a lot of uh, problems today. We also covered the theory part. So I think you guys should be good now. And uh, as I told you, there will be typically three types of problems which will be asked. One is solving the equation by any of the methods. Second will be on the nature of roots. And third will be word problems where again, solving of equation will be uh, important as in, you know, very important ingredient of the problem. So um, uh, if you are, you know, uh, solving all the previous year questions around 20 odd questions, you know, uh, before you take the exam, I think you should be good. And in case you have any difficulty, any doubt, or any concept has to be revisited, please reach out to me. And if needed, we will be doing another dedicated session on the same topic. I hope these revision classes are helpful to you. So please attend these. If you are not getting time or because of, let's say, your other mock exams going on in school, if you are not able to find time, I would recommend that whenever you get time, you please go through the YouTube channel and see it, watch it at your own pace. So we will call it a day and I hope this session was useful to you. And uh, we will be back again with another class tomorrow. So thanks for attending the session, guys. All the best.